All right, everyone, we've got some uh, news actually very, very recently here, which is uh, Uranium One. I'm like, I get up, I go on Twitter. I see Uranium One's trending. At first, I'm figuring, oh, you know, Trump brought it up again. Maybe Hillary Clinton talked about it again. Uh, no, Jeff Sessions is actually commanding that the FBI agents involved uh, back during the Obama era with actually investigating that they're going to come in and be interviewed uh, and, and get a little bit of a talking to to see exactly what happened. That's a good thing. It's like with investigating everything else. As long as the investigation is fair, it's good that there's an investigation. Even like the Mueller stuff, if you've got legitimate concerns of wrongdoing, it makes sense to investigate things. It, then you take another step and it becomes a witch hunt. Like, you know, there's a, a fine line between the two, it seems. Uh, but with Uranium One, it doesn't seem like there was ever any real thorough investigation. It seems like some FBI agents went in. Uh, briefly looked at it, got squished out by probably at the time Loretta Lynch or Obama himself maybe, uh, and then the issue was let go of. Uh, then the deal goes through after a very cursory overview, and now Jeff Sessions I think is trying to get to the bottom of it. Now one thing that we have seen is that it seems like covering their asses is not something that some corrupt individuals within these departments actually do very well. Uh, otherwise we wouldn't be hearing reports of, oh yeah, FBI agents were talking about how they fucking hate Trump and, you know, McCabe or McCab there was talking about his insurance policy against a Trump win and stuff. Uh, it seems like actually there's a fair degree of openness uh, about uh, things that you, you would think that somebody who's, yeah, they're in the FBI and they're obviously well trained. They understand a little bit about, you know, the world, uh, certainly about cybersecurity you would think that they'd be better at making sure people didn't know that that sort of talk was going on. Apparently that's not actually the case. It's like roughly shadowing the NSA, where we have all of these different reports. We have a huge amount of leaked info showing the, uh, the NSA is basically violating everyone's constitutional rights on a on a minute to minute basis. You know, not that it was stopped, like Ted Cruz came out basically and watered it down, I think uh, McConnell at the time as well. But at the very least, we were able to discover that wrongdoing had occurred uh, so that those that are perhaps, you know, uh, the, the operating on a higher level at least can take some countermeasures against being abused constantly. Now, with the FBI, that's not the real problem. The real problem is that it appears uh, that there was systemic favoritism, not, not necessarily at the FBI level itself, but we know, like, with Loretta Lynch's tarmac meeting, do you think, do you actually think that she and Bill went into the back of the plane, you know, no one else is allowed back there to talk about something totally mundane. Do you actually believe that that's the case, or do you think it was fishy? Then you have at least some uh, people in the FBI, their immediate reaction is literally nothing more than, hey, we got to find out who leaked the fact that they talked at all. They're not, they're not concerned about the actual substance. With Uranium One, it looks like, uh, or with Fusion GPS, there is some degree of mass corruption uh, within some individuals within these groups. It's good to investigate it, but with something that significant, it is possible, if Obama himself was involved, which, you know, you could take a wild guess, there's a good 50-50 chance of it, the other 50 would be Loretta Lynch, essentially. Uh, I would think that they'd probably have covered their asses, like at least on their level. So don't expect this to like, oh yeah, Hillary Clinton's done for because of Uranium One, like she's going to be in a, I, I doubt it. I doubt that they're going to put her into a cell. Or Obama, he'll be brought to justice for, like, you know, basically selling out the United States uh, nuclear material to the Russians. Uh, at the most, under the most optimistic circumstances, what this shows is that the collusion with Russia did not involve, like, Trump or the, the sort of new wave populists. It involved people who were already in government. It was years before and often people with D's after their name. That's essentially what it would show. I'm optimistic that something like that could still happen because it's almost unthinkable that that's not what happened. That's honestly what I think. The establishment here, and this ties in with what the EU is doing right now with like the Trump tax reform. They're saying it's illegal under global rules. I'll be talking about that in a few minutes as well. Uh, the globalists, have been corrupt for a long time. They have an inordinate amount of control and they work together cross country. Uh, it's all multinational. Like a lot of people within our government, they're not really, at this point, they're almost not even US politicians. They're just politicians in general. Like the world tends to share them. 
uh, like they had think they they need leverage you know uh, beyond diplomacy between countries there's price fixing and globalist finances and efforts to shelter you know corporate groups so they can keep you know the money flowing around all these different political individuals that seems to be what more often than not is the case uh, and that the only time when it doesn't occur and the only way in which you're in a country where this isn't happening is if you're in a tin horn dictatorship where the dictator is so egomaniacal they won't even work with globalists even if it means enriching themselves so basically you're between a rock and a hard place when it comes to these things when people say well if you don't like the way things work move to a different country there's nowhere to move to therein lies the problem there is no free nation anymore in the world they're all either dictatorships or close to dictatorship level now, or destabilized and worthless entirely, like there is no real centrality and it's basically mob rule. Uh, or they're part of this globalist scheme, which means that everyone living therein, unless they're part of the political establishment or they're the head of a huge corporation or bank, they're essentially a, a peasant, a slave. It doesn't even matter. They could have millions of dollars. If they're not connected to the right people, they're basically a slave too. Their gilded cage is just a little bit bigger and more fancy. That's way, the way the world is working. When we see stuff like that, we need to think beyond, well, it's the Democrats are corrupt. Clinton is corrupt, or, or, or people around her, her inner circle is corrupt. It goes well, I think, uh, beyond that to a worldwide conspiracy, which is just, hey, we don't need to directly abuse anyone. But behind the scenes, we need to manipulate things globally in order to keep the money flowing, to be able to siphon the vast majority of world wealth into those same few hands. And people aren't even generally aware of it. Again, because uh, the average person in this world they're either doing survival farming, which they don't have time to really think about anything because they've got to grow their crops, otherwise they die. Or they're in one of these globalist countries. They're a little bit better off, but again, they still, I mean, they still starve if they don't work. That's essentially still how it works. So all of the uh, idea of charity, that's just spreading, you know, what little few breadcrumbs you allow the peasants to the peasants that are even worse off. And none of these people at the top pay a dime back into any of their systems. They are always takers. Uh, and they're the ones thus that have all of the money and power uh, and all of the prestige and things like that. Essentially, a lot of this is just a floor show. My hope, though, is that, and I'm not 100% sure of this, and I admitted this during the election, my hope is that there are uprising populists right now that actually do give a damn and haven't been corrupted, or that they saw the corruption and it made them so uncomfortable they formed a little uh, coalition, a little bit of resistance, you could say. Now, I know that the Clinton people want to do hashtag resist, we're going to resist evil mean Trump bullshit. Uh, Hillary Clinton is the establishment, Obama is the establishment, the rhinos, the neocons are the establishment. They're all the same thing. They've been doing the same thing for the last 30 years. It's a no-brainer. Th therein lies your swamp. Hopefully Trump actually intends to drain it. Uh, when I see that so many people are up in arms about the tax deal, meanwhile U.S. firms like non-multinationals too are saying, yeah, we're going to raise all of our workers' wages because we can do that now. Hey, that's a good thing, I think, for the American people. I think it's wonderful. And if the EU is, is complaining about it, good. Good. They also complain about there's too much free speech in the U.S. These U.S. tech firms need to censor things. No, we should tell them to screw off. That's really what we should tell these groups. Uh, Outcompete them. Let them suffer. That's about all. Peace out.